I'm so to honored. See that it's like working out, you know, I love it. <laughs> Plus it was so funny. I was talking to somebody about, they were watching the eat and greet and I was like, yeah, Clarissa's like the cool cousin who comes over and you know, it's about <laughs> to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was like, yes, this is a beautiful thing. All right, you guys, we are in. Welcome to today's Eat and Greet. And this is part two of the Quincunx in Vibrational Astrology. Welcoming back Clarissa Dolphin. Welcome, my lady. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here again. I know. It's so funny. It was like literally what? Last week. Like you were here last week and we're like, and we're back. I know, right? Mas rápido. Let's do this. Which is, is beautiful because today is the Mercury trying to Saturn retrograde, which is a fabulous day to go back to a talk or a topic or to re-engage something. So we are, we're on the time. Yeah, it's all perfect. All perfect. Okay. So before we jump in, you guys, a little housekeeping stuff that's coming up. We do still have the autumn equinox gifts that are out. And yes, they are booking up like crazy. And then regular appointments are available at an earlier time slate if you are looking for that. So just because you don't see them in there, the regular ones are still available. And if you really like have got to have a session. The priority sessions are always open and book within 72 hours. So you can check that out there as well. If you missed part one with Miss Clarissa, it is in the eat and greet playlist. So you can go check it out, get caught up. We're going to do a quick little recap here before we get started, but then we're going to jump forward. So just to make sure you get all of the good ish, you can go back and check that out as well. So let's get in here. Let's recap this bad boy. Alrighty then. So I'm just going to share my screen right now so that we can get our recap on. Welcome to part two of the Queen Kunks and Vibrational Astrology. And again, thank you for having me store me and everybody. Like I'm so stoked to be doing this today. So quick recap, the Queen Kunks is 150 degree angle in an astrology chart. This is its, uh, you know, signal, its sign. Um, and you know, what the research that you know, I've conducted with my vibrational astrologer uh, colleagues, uh, have unearthed about what it is and what it means is that it's a presser pressure point, stimulating growth and change. So unlike other, uh, aspects that, you know, like hard aspects, uh, opposition squares, which are just behaviors. You just do them. There ain't no growth around them. It's just what happens. And, you know, soft aspects like trines are more just, you know, easily expressed. Both of them, both hard aspects and soft aspects are easily more, way more easily expressed than the quincunx because they don't need to grow or change, period. They just are what they are. So that's that. And, you know, particularly... The quincunx in vibrational astrology has three main characteristics, basic characteristics. One being vulnerability, because the quincunx knows it has to change. It knows it needs to grow, but it has absolutely no idea how to do it. So it's an inherent naivete. It's an inherent uh, ignorance or, you know, block that you really have no reference point for. So it's an unprecedented kind of thing. It also can, in many situations, produce challenge and controversy. Just because it doesn't fit in, it is awkward. We can look at the quincunx as like this developmental prepubescent or pubescent thing. Um, and I don't know about you, but when I was going through puberty, I was all kind of awkward. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, so there's that. And, you know, another <laughs> reason why it's, you know, awkward and, um, why, you know, it's challenging and controversial is because it, as an inherent growth process, it's seeking something more than the status quo. And so when we're disrupting the status quo, there's a little bit of upset because, uh, you know, like most humans, I hate change. I'm sure you, a lot of you do too. And, and, you know, so the quincunx presents in our charts and in our harmonics 
this itch that never gets scratched, no matter how long you're living. Okay, so there's that. And so now let's start where we picked up, or, or excuse me, where we left off. Let's pick up where we left off. Right? <laughs> it's very quincunxy, right? It's like, wait, what? Like, wait, what? Like, where'd my tongue go? I just, <laughs> I can't talk no more. So, okay. all right. So we picked up, uh, or we left off on the fifth and 11th harmonic quincunxes. So we covered the seven, nine, eight, and the 13. And we're going to start with the five and the 11 today because they, the, the way that the quincunx operates in these harmonics are just so very different from the other uh, four in the base six uh, harmonics in that the quincunx actually, and this is very shocking for us as researchers, um, this was a shock point. The quincunx and the 11 and the five, they, they actually flow well. So they actually uh, create and appear to, to operate a little more normally. And I do put that in quotes and you'll see why in a bit, than how it operates in the other four. And so here is the reasoning behind that um, at this point, because what this quincunx research has unleashed is like years more research. <laughs> like, which that's is so, right. That's right. And that's, you know, the beauty of it, you know, it's it, it, inherent in its form, you know, it's a growth and maturation point in the chart. So even us as researchers, it ain't going to be locked down with the first research project. We're going to have to keep growing around it and et cetera, et cetera. So, so the shock thing on, on how it flows well in the five and 11 is theoretically because the five vibration and the 11 vibration are already moving and growing. Mm -hmm. Very, so it's, it's, it's um like story was talking about like i'm the cool cousin like we're related you know it's almost kind of like a related thing like they're you know that they they are distant or first cousins or whatever just because of their base operations and another point that i think i forgot in the recap today is just a little bit more about what va is and just how we view the chart just basically we view the chart as frequencies, as energies, and it's really synonymous with music theory and, and physics in that, um, you know, there, if we're talking about certain notes in music, like a sharp A is going to sound differently than a flat A, even though it's the same note. And so, you know, and there are different notes in music that produce different effects. So when you're listening to it, like, you know, like I'm a, I'm a total music file, like I'm a total psycho, I'm into music, right? <laughs> so, you know, when I'm listening to classical, you know, versus hip hop, you know, I have WAP stuck in my head, I'm about to get on the floor and twerk <laughs> versus, you know, kind of relax. And so, you know, every harmonic has, it are like these different notes in a way, and in the way that they produce different kinds of things. So, okay, so let's get a little bit more into the exact meanings of the quincunx in the five and 11 now. Because even though they do flow a little better, they can still be controversial, they can still be challenging, and they can still be frankly weird. Okay, so let's look at That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, straight up. Okay, so the quincunx in the fifth vibration, the main meaning is, and the main operation for it is defending uniqueness. So if you have a fifth uh, harmonic uh, quincunx, there is, depending on the planet, you're defending some type of unique approach be it an interest, a hobby, a position, or a point of view um, that is potentially controversial in itself. So here are the top people um, in the fifth harmonic 
or, or in our research that turned up with the strongest fifth harmonic quincunxes. And we're going to really focus on the top guy, Robert Thompson Leeper, uh, because you're definitely going to see how this man is defending uniqueness once we know a little bit more about him. So um, I just kind of want to, I it, let's just guess a little bit, like, what would this guy possibly do? Well, Robert Thompson Leeper, which is like the creepiest name ever. Is, <laughs> no, it's like Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> it's totally like Hannibal Lecter. And his life, to some of us who are a little squeamish about this, is Hannibal Lecter-ish in that the man is a worm scientist. That's the, like the, what we're looking at and all this grossness with these parasitic things is what he does. And it's in his fifth harmonic via the quincunxes, okay? So he's a parasitologist and a helminthologist, okay? So it is, I think, arguably the weirdest occupation ever. <laughs> and the thing about Mr. Leifer is that even when he was a kid, he was always into worms. So let's just think about, you know, when you're eight years old or whatever, and you're in the garden and you're just playing, right? And you pick up, but he, instead of just like making a sandcastle or something, this man digs up dirt and brings all the worms into the house. And it's like, hey, mom, like, I want to be a worm scientist. Blah, blah. Like, it's like, just that, like, mom would be like, can't you just be a doctor with the worms? Like, <laughs> what? Okay, like, so there we go. So let's look at his fifth harmonic. This is his natal chart. And so he has some quincunx action natally, which we'll get to in a little bit as well. Um, but so here, all the blue lines here are the quincunxes. And the green lines are the sextiles. So with Mr. Leaper in his fifth harmonic, what we have uh, is we have a Mercury jupiter saturn neptune lunar north node and so in vibrational astrology mercury saturn is all about research and mercury saturn particularly in the fifth harmonic uh is is it's actually the fifth harmonic as we discussed in the previous lecture i believe is it's it's very much tied into the sciences um, because of the way that it likes to explore and, and like to just see how, because of how it flows and how it moves like the DNA helix where it's just like, oh, like this is interesting knowledge. Like let's create something. Fifth Harmonic is all about creativity and science is one of the most creative forms of anything that we have access to as human beings in, in our lives. Okay, so this guy is really defending a very unique type of research, which is a research into worms. And this man has in, you know, he's late now, of course, he's deceased, but he was officially recognized with, you know, breakthroughs in research for worms. I mean, what this man did for us, you know, through his scientific research into these nasty little parasites is he provided us with a wealth of knowledge about how they operate. So thank goodness that he had the quincunx here to, to support his weird research, okay? Um, so that's really interesting. Let's move on. It's kind of to... interesting though that in his chart, yeah. his his pioneering in that Mercury tip top of the chart, right? Like he was gonna fight to pioneer that bad boy despite the awkwardness of the topic. Look at that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fabulous. And it's so fabulous. It's it's just it's so killer. He's such a he's such a G for that. Um, and I attribute it mostly here because of, you know, the powerful quincunxes he has. He has like four, you know, and, 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 you know, part of vibrational astrology, when we look at any type of aspects, whether they're invisible or not, because vibrational astrologers look into 
invisible aspects like direct midpoint structures and like isotropes um, to, to glean information. Um, so when we see strong aspects like this, like, you know, things that are fortified with many planets, it means that it's extremely strong. And so it's going to press out into life way easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that. It's going to press out into life. That is a good way to see that push. Thank you. Yeah. And I love that term too. Push, boom, blam. It's out there. It's out there energetically. So, and this is a very, I love this meaning for the 11th vibration in the quincunx because the quinc the 11th vibration actually doesn't operate like this normally. So the quincunx in the 11th vibration, it shows up as critiquing and reforming norms, be they social norms or just any type of norm. So in the research, the top subjects, they are investigating the design of modern structures literal and figurative. Uh, and let's talk a little bit about why this is modern. It's because the 11th vibration is modern. So we were talking about, we were talking about, you know, both the five and the 11 just being moving, right? And so how the 11 moves, that's very distinct from the five, is the 11 is what I like to call the crack harmonic or the speed harmonic. Um, re referencing the drugs, um, and I do not wish to insult you if you do not like drugs at all, but I, I'm, it, it is very similar in that the it's so restless, you know, it's just like it cannot stop. That's why it's constantly moving. So unlike the five, when things happen in the 11 arm harmonic, they are really extreme. They're really extreme change. They're real. It's so restless. It can't. It can't even deal with the past. It can barely deal with the present. It almost like sweeps things away, um, and and cre to create a path for the future. And typically, the far future. A lot of people with strong eleven in the research, as well as with my clients and et cetera, et cetera. These people are so forward thinking that. Like, so, so for example, Miles Davis, the jazz um, mm -hmm. musician, he's a very strong 11. And so he's like this creator of bebop. He's this creator of the genre hard bop. And he, as, and as you know, like I'm a fan and I'm a huge fan of Miles Davis, you know, for many years, my dad is too. So I know his career, but if you actually are interested and you see his career, you can see the 11 operating you know, from his early bebop days to, you know, right before he died, like he, like Herbie Hancock, he started to hook up with the hip hop producers and things like that later on in his career. And he's like 70 something. So he has no reason to change or look to the future. But since he's such a strong 11, he going to do that anyway. That's just how he's going to operate. Okay. So I hope that kind of elucidates how the 11 works versus the five because the five is more like oh, like oh let's create like this is so fun you know stuff like that and the eleven's like Ruth like oh you better create now like it's like so right. hard like, last this into the future yes like a rocket yeah wow okay so cool right like it's so cool okay and so let's talk a little bit about these people who are the top subjects um, for the 11th harmonic in the research. Uh, Fagus was a French social critic who, um, and a poet who really had his heyday in the early 1900s. And um, he was very critical of, um, ooh, let me just look this up for you really quickly because it's a very, very specific he was critical of the Cartesian order, which, you know, I don't know, I'm not a theologian and I do not know much about what that is, but it's a Catholic religious order of enclosed monastics. And so he was like this dude, he was born in 1872. So 
in the early 1900s, he we were way past the Middle Ages. But since he was so into the Cartesian order and the Middle Ages, he actually critiqued modern society based on the Cartesian order. And the Cartesian order was very alive in the region of France that he lived in. Okay, so that's that's kind of interesting in that he's he's re-looking, and this is very interesting because the, like we said, you know, the disruptive element of the quincunx, the 11 typically does not look back, right? So having the quincunx here uh, and, and having these people look back to look present, to look forward is already weird, okay? Like, so that's interesting. So now we're gonna look into Patrick Chamoiseau, uh, who is the fifth highest quincunx guy but I, I feel that he uh, it really translates the message of the quincunx in the 11th uh, harmonic, probably some of the most clearly. So let's look into what he does. Look at that hat. I know, right? He's styling this He's guy. He's like, sorry for all this, but here it is. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> is working it and it, max, it matches his shirt. Like, thank you, Patrick, for all you're giving us right now. <laughs> Okay, so he is actually a Caribbean writer and he invested, he, well, not only does he investigate Creoleness, but he was actually the man who created this whole literary canon and genre around the, please forgive me, I do speak Spanish, but I don't speak French. So everything turns out as Spanish. So forgive me for botching this word, but he created the Creolite literary genre. Okay. And um, let, let's look at his chart and then I'll read to you what the Creolite genre is. Okay. So here is his needle chart. And here is his 11th harmonic. So, um, so for him, Creole, Creolote is really, it's just, he's trying to answer the question of what does it mean to be Caribbean? So this question is the subject of a search for identity and the word that Chomoso and his colleagues use to answer this question is Creoleness or Creolite. And Creolness refers to how different cultures adapt and blend together on islands or isolated areas, um, which in this case of the Caribbean, it refers to the blending of African culture, Polynesian cultures, you know, Asian cultures, especially because he lives in Trinidad. So there's like a lot of Indian population historically there from India and um, other European cultures and how they fuse to create a cultural identity. Now, you know, um, a lot of planets in VA do not operate like they do in other forms of astrology. And that's a pretty, that's a really good standard. And solo planets in VA um, don't really tell us as much as couplets and beyond in VA, all right? so. For him, what's really interesting is that one of these planets in VA that do operate like regular planets in other forms of astrology is Mercury. Mercury is very kind of synonymous. Um, and it, the only difference is that in VA, Mercury is, is um, all planets are energy functions. Um, and so long story short, he's a writer. Right. And, you know, we would think like, OK, in his 11th harmonic, he's doing all this Creoleness and uh, all that stuff. So, you know, hey, there where's Mercury in this Quincunx situation? Right. Right. But Mercury is not forming a Quincunx aspect here. But what is forming a Quincunx aspect here is Moon Pluto, Moon yeah. Venus moon uh neptune and moon uranus now here's how this uh relates to what he's actually doing moon pluto is as a couplet function in va is very historical right 
because it brings up everything that has been buried beneath to the surface. And moon Pluto as a function in VA are one of, and this actually goes for moon Neptune too, but in very different ways that we're gonna talk about in a second. But moon Pluto is, a, the moon in VA is the keeper of history. Okay. It is, it's the right. So, so when we have moon Pluto, we have the keeper of, we have Pluto bursting, bringing history out in a compulsive way, in a way, and, 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 and in an uncontrollable way. And then moon Neptune here is really all about the soul's journey. That's what moon Neptune signifies a lot. Moon Neptune is very aware that everybody has a higher purpose, has a higher uh, vision and actually has, you know, a soul. So what he's thinking about here is the cultural soul and how it transforms into culture in his 11th harmonic quincunx pattern. So what's fascinating about this, and this happens all the time in VA, is that the person is made up of a whole bunch of different frequencies. We're not gonna find the whole person in one harmonic, mm. okay? So we find the motivation behind his social critiquing and his creation of Crayola Tay as more of this emotional force that's really just interested in people's true history in the creation of Trinidadian culture and in Caribbean culture. So I, I thought that was super interesting. Okay, so now I know we're gonna get to charts in a second. So let's wrap this up. Um, let's talk about the quincunx in the first vibration, which is the natal chart, or in VA terms, it's the fundamental frequency. Um, the, if you do have a quincunx in your first vibration, it typically speaks to self-referential challenges. So it's really kind of like problems with identifying what you want to express in the world or, and or how to do it. So uh, a question that might come up is, who am I and what do I really want? Like, mm -hmm. uh, like it's kind of like a disassociated thing. Um, whereas normally in the first harmonic, there's not, the person is so self-referential, they don't really even have to look outside of themselves to find what's their truth sure. and how they operate. Okay. And so let's talk about finally on our final slide here, how the quincunx offer, how to embrace it, right? Because challenge culture, you know, controversy, vulnerability, nobody wants to embrace that. <laughs> You know, like, I don't want to be challenged or, you know, thrust into the unknown to create this unprecedented thing. But, you know, really what the quincunx tells us is that growth leads to glory, because no matter how vulnerable you feel being thrust into these new environments where you don't have a reference point for how to act here or how to produce it, et cetera, et cetera, you are in your process of growing and maturing, you are getting strength and knowledge along the way, period, end of story. That is the benefit of the quincunx. So no matter how much you're going to continue to have to grow from this quote sore spot in your life, the growth doesn't dissipate. It doesn't disappear. It's actually there and it does get easier as you move on forward. If you, you know, just embrace and accept that these are the way the energies function. In VA, our kind of uh, astrological consult consulting um, perspective is not to run away from the strongest energies. It's just to embrace them and to be aware of them. Because once you are aware of these energies, um, particularly the strongest ones in your chart, then you're able to just make a choice about it. Um, and, you know, like, for example, my strongest quincunx, Sun, Mercury, Venus, um, Neptune, Pluto. And so that's really all about um, presenting my art to the world, my art, Sun, Pluto, not anybody else's, presenting my point of view into the world. It took me 36 years to develop a slide on slides and presentations on vibrational astrology. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I, I did. 
and it was hard okay like i had all kind of quincunx moments and of pain in growth um but i'm doing it now and it's easier and it's rewarding and so you do get rewarded when you do your quincunx stuff because you're not you're you're going to get that strength and also really there's nothing wrong with you so you don't know what to do you know so you have a blind spot and this is like the biggest gift that you can possibly be given in the universe i'm also a shamanic healer basically it's just really healing from the realms where the spirit lives exploring the realms where the spirits live etc and one thing that um, is relevant to this presentation in that realm is that particularly us in the earth school we're all here to learn that's the whole thing and you know i have been privileged to go to source and to be in that energy and, it, and you don't have to think about source just think about the big bang you know just growth 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 that's what we're all here for it's just nature so there ain't nothing wrong with you for growing and not knowing how to mm. okay so here you know, here's the thing. that like five times like turn it into a t-shirt this weekend <laughs> i for real <laughs> you weren't see i'm gonna watch the recording and just make t-shirts now and send it to everybody <laughs> so here's how you can catch up with me but um this is all my information now let's get to the charts let's have some fun and um do this live okay yeah, and we have a question too if we yeah. have time if we can get it in here um okay. people are wondering especially with that 11th vibration if elon musk has is what his vibrations are so we'll see if we have time Ooh. we might not but we'll see yeah and i'm not sure about his birth data either if it's accurate so, yeah but it's we can questionable because he doesn't have a, a specific time so we can't look into it unfortunately dang it um okay. we have to have his time elon's out today guys but we'll still enjoy his antics on the internet <laughs> yeah yeah it's either fifth or 11th for this man okay <laughs> like i'm <laughs> okay so let's what we have here is the united states chart i use the sibley chart 5 10 p.m philadelphia um july 4th six is the Sibley chart for me is the most accurate chart yeah. for analyzing the US. Me you too. too? Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome to be here. Okay, so here's what I did. So I calculated the strongest quincunxes of the entire chart of all 360 harmonics for the United States. And um, the strongest quincunxes in the United States chart is in the 331st harmonic. And um, the 331st harmonic, a lot of how we read um, charts in VA is we look at the relationship between prime numbers as they grow and grow and grow. Cause that, that sets the foundation for how the energy flows, right? And so the 331st harmonic is built from a lot of very unique primes. It's built from the 11, which we know is crazy and restless. Um, any Americans, can y'all tap into that? You don't even need to be American to know that we're crazy over here. Okay, <laughs> it's like, it's like um, yeah, we got so our that, brand going. We're young, we're young as a people. <laughs> yeah, that's our excuse, right? We're just, <laughs> so, we have that frenetic craziness of the 11 here. We have the 13th harmonic here, which is all these weird characters, you know, all these different personalities. Um, and then we have the seven as well. That's build it, That's part of the prime base of the 331, which we know for the Quincunx specifically is really about all these differing life, you know, changing paths, etc. Okay, long story short, let's look at this. What are the Quincunx is telling us here? Saturn, Neptune, Saturn, Neptune, religion, spirituality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is really goes to the tenet of separation of church and state, right? That That's a, a tenet in our constitution, but from day one to now, it's really, there's really not that much of a separation of church and, church, um, and state in many of our states. There's a lot, and there's a movement, and there have always been movement movements um, 
especially if you look at part one of the Quincunx, uh, the part one lecture with Anita Bryant and how, you know, she was really, there are so many movements that are built on um, Christian beliefs and spiritual beliefs and trying to change legislation to honor these beliefs. And that's very much happening now, right? So this is our point of growth. And if you like, even like The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, um, Margaret Atwood, the Canadian writer, you know, if you look at, I saw an interview with her and she was, you know, based it on the fact that the United States changes a lot, transforms a lot through religious movement. Right. And so, you know, in the in the in the, the Handmaid's Tale, the religious movement um, actually merged the church and church and state again. So this is something that we're constantly going to be dealing with as a country unless we recreate our Constitution and we have a new birth date for it. Another thing that's really interesting here is the moon lunar north node quincons. Mm -hmm. Now, this is about really the rights to free speech and things like that because the way that the lunar node works in um vibrational astrology i also did this research project um is that the lunar node is just like this torrent of expression you can't plug it you can't stop it it's one of those things that just shoot out into the world and there's there's nothing that you can do about it and so when we're talking about this this is about you know shooting out um, your own emotions, like just doing whatever the hell you want to do, which is a very huge American thing. Now, this is interesting that it's the quincunx because that causes problems. Doing whatever the hell you want to do is, and that's been the, one of the main points of content, contention and growth for our country, right? It's so interesting. And finally, this is also speaking the sun mercury pluto quincunx here it also speaks to a lot of the, the you know first amendment rights to free speech etc cetera, etc cetera. this is about this is really about expressing what you want to express the the moon lunar north node and this is really about saying what you want to say our we're in this point where we have, you know, a lot of fat, we're in a factless society with the internet yeah, yeah. and we have a lot of conspiracy theories going on here. Um, and, you know, I, Stormy, me, you know, as a black American, a lot of what's being said and what is being translated as truth in the way that we write our history here. And, you know, we gloss over the slavery part in elementary school, like, oh it's just like one semester oh like there is slavery and everything's okay now no no <laughs> you know so it's this re this revisionist truth that is in our chart as americans okay so now let's get to people <laughs> you know, that said let's get to people <laughs> let's get to people so we are with michelle now and i know that Michelle wanted to speak to this ninth harmonic thing, Queen Kunx. Um, and so let's speak to that. <laughs> All right. And you were talking about the kite here. This is the kite um, with yeah. these planets here, which is very strong energy in VA. So we know that this is an important harmonic to read, period. And so for this is a very interesting um, a quincunx expression because in the ninth harmonic the quincunx is expressed as radical relating and so for you michelle what your quincunx indicates is is um a very uh it's there's this isolation element to your quincunx in a non-isolated harmonic um that makes that is kind of forcing you to radically relate, forcing you to radically share the insights, especially the insights that you get um, while you're in nature. So here's how I think that this, this, is, this might play out in a life, right? The moon, Saturn, Venus, quincunx, inherently, it just finds itself in nature. It is related to nature. It is related to, you know, this simple beauty that is found in nature that you don't really have to search for, et cetera, et cetera. But 
it's it's not really that keen on uh it doesn't really know the quincunx doesn't really know how to to translate its natural self in silence and not isolation into the public world into socializing right but at the same time with this this kite makes this very a complex issue because the kite here says that it is that you are able to do what the ninth harmonic wants to do which is heal which is um which is heal for the community by sharing these isolated insights that you find in nature you're actually the kite compels you to share these because what you are able to do is you are able to create um a more sustainable vision but sustainable for you know psychology like basically it's like you know humans need nature i found out psychologically why this helped me why these going into bare simplicity and doing working from bare basics actually you know works for me but then the queen comes is like oh but i don't want to share that and then but the kite is like oh but you need to share that because you from your personal insights you are able to transform the relationship of the community psyche to these raw elements of nature so that's how i would read that <laughs> you're like ta-da ta-da and also i wanted to talk about you know michelle's eighth harmonic quincunx with mercury uh, neptune we know that the eighth harmonic quincunx means aggressive transformation so we have an aggressive transformation here through mercury neptune which is symbols and signs and metaphors and things like that. So this would be very sensitive to insignias and to, you know, how people are portraying things. You know, this is the eighth harmonic Mercury Neptune is very interesting because a lot of people in marketing typically have it. Um, and they're also interested in astrology and things like this um, because you know, astrologies are all about reading signs and signs. What this quincunx knows is just how important signs are. So things like the Nazi thing, I don't that that the swastika or whatever, mm -hmm. it's very sensitive to the meanings behind what these things actually mean. And so it it forces train and it's like, okay, I want you to change that depiction. That's the, what are you actually do you know what that's communicating by? you know like it's aggressively all about that mm. Mm. yeah so um michelle is saying this is so accurately scary because she's been in semi-isolation for 10 years and done most of the learning from psychology Dang. yeah she didn't know that about her eighth but now she now you've got a little a little something miss michelle <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that feedback. And it, it shocks me every time how accurate this stuff is. It's like, what? Like, so thank you. <laughs> cool. All right. So we have Tara. I don't know if she's here or if somebody else wants to um, go for it. Since we do have 12 minutes, we can do a few more. Oh, okay, you guys. If you want us to pull your chart, we need your date of birth, time of birth, and place. So put it in the comment section and we'll scoop it up. Okay, Tara, where you be? Hopefully she's out here. If not, she'll watch it on the playback. Exactly. So Tara also has a, an eighth harmonic quincunx between Venus Uranus. And Venus Uranus, it comes out in a few ways in vibrational astrology. So Tara, it can come Tara. Oh, Tara, good. I'm so glad you're here. Awesome. So for you, Tara, the, the Venus Uranus, it can come out in three different ways in VA. It's either music, sex, or dance. It's it's one All of those. Great. All are great. <laughs> All are great, right? <laughs> and kind of unfortunately, we have the quincunx here. So it's like, <laughs> so 
The Queen comes in um, eighth harmonic in VA, aggressive transformation through sex, music, or dance. And that's pretty much what it says. So this is, you know, developmentally, I think that um, it can almost feel like it's off rhythm in a way, like things are or not even, not just itself, but just its relationship to the basic world. It can just kind of feel like, um, what like i'm not flowing here like choppy right and so you know as you're you it, it really it's it's really aggressively trying to find a flow trying to find some type of energetic harmony and you know sexual issues may be a thing um you know but so that's one thing but it could also just be like okay i just can't get into the rhythm of this and what kind of rhythm, we need to change this rhythm. Okay. And so as you also have a Saturn Pluto in your ninth harmonic, which again, we're at radical relating here. And Saturn Pluto, as we know, is that chopping function. It just cuts things off, right? So in terms of, you know, um, relating, it can, it can um, just, really feel like like it can't possibly relate and it doesn't make any sense for the 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 other stuff that's in the nine like the the sun um mercury uranus pluto because what this says this sun stuff it's it says that you know tara like you can transform any conversation like really the way that you connect with people and the and you know just who you are is this excellent communicator you really get people really fast there's you know so the fact that this thing is going on with the quincunx here it's like okay i can get really fast i can have a conversation with anybody boom it doesn't matter and we can have a transforming conversation the quincunx comes here and it's like but was that too much is that enough? Like it's not, like it's always cause like, but it, it, you know, it, it 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 feels like it needs to take it down a notch or bring it up a notch. It doesn't know. So interesting. Okay, so that. Okay, so we also have we can move on to another person now, or we can still do Tara. Well, let me give you. We've got a couple of them that are in here, so let's try these ones and see. But Tara also said, without revealing anything too personal, it is super on point. Yeah. All right, here's our next birthday. You ready? Yes. Okay, we've got June fourth, nineteen seventy-eight. Thirteen twenty is the time, and Singapore. Where in Singapore? Oh, uh, let's see. I don't see it. Okay, let's do a different one because I don't see it. Sorry, okay. ready? Let's change date. Okay, so we've got 42688. Uh-huh. Oh, y'all are killing me. There is no time here. We're moving on. Okay, March 2nd, 1970. March 2nd, 1970. 2.09 a.m. 9 a.m. And Manhasse, M-A-N-H-A-S-S-E, New York. M-A-N-H-A-S-S-E? Mm-hmm. Manhasse? Mm, let's try it. Let's okay. try it. All right. So I don't see a Manhasse in the database, but we do have Manhasse, so hopefully that's correct. Yep, hopefully Steven, I got you on that one. <laughs> okay, so we see, you know, a pretty strong quincunx in the natal harmonic or, you know, the fundamental frequency with Mars Pluto. And Mars Pluto is really, it's all, Mars Pluto just does backbreaking tireless work um, such that it just, it, it it's completely unsustainable to do Mars Pluto all the time. You really kind of have to break it up into projects where like you're busting your butt for like several months at a time. And then you have like a month or two off um, because it, it works itself to death. It's, it can't stop <laughs> moving. So in the first harmonic, it's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to work? You know, what am I working on? <laughs> like, what am I supposed to work tirelessly for? 
right? So let's look at your other harmonics, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, 13, and see if we can get some other stuff going on here. See if there's some, okay. So we, aggressive transformation is just like a topic today. Yeah, that's, it's good though. I feel like we've just had this Pisces full moon coming into Virgo, who Virgo's like, do things, do things. Yes. So yes. aggressive transformation is the theme of September, friends. It's, <laughs> you're so funny story. I love it. Okay, so we're talking, so aggressive transformation with Mars Uranus taught i mean this is probably the most aggressive transformation that you can possibly um imagine because mars uranus in vibrational astrology has a lot to do with tempers like it, mars uranus is is mars by itself and uranus by itself doesn't get angry but mars uranus does it pops off it blows up it you know it gets it's like no, like, so it is aggressive. So we have aggressive transformation with two, with the most aggressive planetary pair that you can possibly muster. So really, I, here's how I would see this play out. It may not be a personality trait, but it may just be that, you know, how things change and grow and mature in this life is typically from these instances of, of, you know, violence, temper, aggression, that's the point of change and transformation. And obviously that's hard, man. Cause, and sometimes, you know, we're not doing a full natal analysis. So I don't know if there's like a, where the sensitivity points are in this chart, but I would suspect that, you know, this is just who wants to deal with this level of aggression every time you change? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like who wants to do like that? Just accepting that I think might be one of the hardest processes of this coin hunks, particularly. Yeah. That's what I would suspect. Yeah. So he's yeah. like, he said, yes, he had to really work on his temper. So for sure. All right. Let's do our Singapore person. I got the, the, okay. especially because Singapore is a city state. So we were oh. in the right zone anyways. I'm telling you what. Actually, being an astrologer really opens me up in the world to learn all of this, all these cities, city states, provinces. You guys are just teaching me like crazy. Okay, so June 4th, 1978. June 4th, 1978. 1320. Yep. And Singapore. Singapore. Okay, Singapore, Singapore. Yeah. <laughs> so, Boom. That's so cool. Okay. So here we are, and we have that natal quincunx. So the natal quincunx with the sun Uranus is, is just, sun Uranus is really about taking spontaneous action. This does not kind of really know how to take spontaneous action or just gets weird about it or just doesn't, it, it's like, uh, like it, it gets like a glitch around those issues. Um, so let's look into the harmonics now, 5, 7, 8, 9, 11, and 13. We're going to have those numbers memorized, right? Like <laughs> we're going to know, we're going to be like, okay, this is what you put in for harmonics. Excellent. And those are the basics and that's all we need to know to start learning VA. So cool. So, so we have the seventh harmonic quincunx here. Um, and we also have a, a 13. Oh, cool. Let's, so let's try to do some stuff that we haven't, um, talked about today. So, okay. Um, so let's do the 13th, um, which is eccentric role playing. So, um, oh yeah. Like the actor you showed us who was being that woman, right? Yes. Yes. Our beloved Frenchman. Um, okay. So this is really interesting. So, huh. I wonder what this is about because Venus Saturn is typically it's it's really about the the beauty of raw ele elements so that's all that's always found in nature but in terms of this whole like persona thing um and doing eccentric characters another um fun fact about uh, Venus Saturn is that Venus Saturn hates makeup it hates overdoing it it hates embellishments 
Mm. So it's like, it's, it's taking on this role without embellishment. It's taking on, you know, it, it's kind of like forced to mime a character in a way that, that has nothing but its raw bones and presenting that as like a character into the world. Um, which is really very, very fascinating for me. And let's, so let's go to the seven as well. Um, and, oh, this is, the, I'm so glad we ended here with the seven for you, um, our friend in Singapore, because this, this one I think would be extremely hard to deal with because Mercury, Pluto in the seventh harmonic, we know that the seventh harmonic quincunx is about switching serious life paths, right? So mm -hmm. this, this could be, I think, maddening for me um, because it, it, it's switching serious life paths, but it's switching serious life paths based on a fluctuating inner truth. So, you know, Mercury Pluto is all about being blunt, expressing bluntly, expressing truth into the world. So when we have this quincunx thing with these planets, moving, thinking, it's moving, you know, switching all these serious life paths, it, 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 it's forced to accept a new truth, a new inner truth um, all the time, right? So it's almost like being a different person a lot, but and literally having to base your life on these new truths, not just like discovering one, but changing your entire life path based on it. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that could make you think that you're crazy, you know, because it's like, okay, like, what is my truth? But the fact is, according to this quincunx, that your truth just fluctuates, that you almost become a new person with new ideals every decade or something. And that's just the way it is. And there ain't nothing wrong with you for that. Mm, I'm waiting for the feedback on that because that seems interesting. It's like that, you know, I almost have this vision of the like all or nothing that kind of can come yeah. with that attitude as well. And then it's like, well, but hold on, we've just changed. So it can't be all or nothing. It's like, hold, hold your ideals, maybe gently. Yes. Yes. And so this person doesn't really have the opportunity to really hold fast to ideals. And that's hard because like you said, exactly why you said Stormy. Yeah. Oh man. So I'm waiting. I'm trying to see Donnie, what's, what's the situation? What's happened? He definitely said it's <laughs> interesting indeed. That's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. So it's so funny. Somebody else too is like, uh, I have my eyes closed and I got all of the numbers right. Five, seven, nine, 11, 13. I'm like, yep, you got him. We got it. Cousin Clarissa for the win. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, man, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And oh, here's Donnie. He said it was, uh, it's a rough ride internally, but glad for the journey. I would think so too, man, Mercury, and especially that Mercury just in gem, just thinking about it in regular astrology. That's so in here. It's yes. so in here. Yep. Mm. All right, y'all. The eat and greet has come to its beautiful conclusion. Clarissa is absolutely findable. So we'll make sure that all of her links are available for you if you want to go check her out, sit down, really dive into where your vibrational patterns are at. I know that I have heavy seven, which I was totally thrilled to find out about. So <laughs> if you want to see what you've got going on, make sure you go check out Clarissa, follow her on all of the socials and all that good stuff as well. Thank Clarissa, you. And if you want to learn VA, I'm teaching a live course in three weeks. So you can find that on my website too. Oh my beginners. gosh. Okay, good. Well, for, for beginners even. Okay, we'll make sure that it's in the description box down below. Clarissa, thank you for coming over again. This has been fabulous. And I'm sure we'll do more. Oh, well, then I can't wait. Thank you. Oh, this is like the best. <laughs> the best. Okay, you guys, I love you a ton. And I will see you very soon in the next set of videos. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.